Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again for another edition of True Conservative Radio. I'm the host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, I wanted to thank you for tuning in with me with another edition here. Uh, Like I've stated in the past shows, I believe we're going to have True Conservative Radio a little bit more frequently And at the same time, I decided to go ahead and throw a show together here on this President's Day. And I wanted to uh, extend my President's Day greetings to all of you out there in America that are celebrating this President's Day. And uh, just wanted to have a little bit of random thoughts about what's going down, excuse me, what's going down in America and what everybody out there had to say about it. Of course, everybody who's been listening into my show knows that I've had a little bit of disdain for the Republican Party at this point. I am a lifelong Republican, and uh, the Republican Party has turned its back on its traditional principles, and on top of which, they've turned their back on the conservative movement. And, of course, I've been criticized many times about uh, my reasoning for not participating in this year's presidential elections. I refuse to vote uh, for John McCain, who is an obvious liberal. Uh, He's two issues away from being a full-blown liberal, and we've discussed that in previous shows. And I've been criticized for not voting for the man because I'm not staying loyal to the party. And I think it goes way beyond party loyalty at this point, folks. And on this President's Day, we got to look at past presidents and understand that uh, the presidents that we celebrate on this day, the reason we celebrate them is based on their principle, based on the fact that they didn't go against their principle. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that I am staying home and I suggest anybody who is a true old school Republican or a true conservative, I suggest that why even bother? Why even bother in this presidential election? Because you're getting a liberal either way. Nobody's really acknowledging the true hardships of America. And I've stated this over and over. I mean, you know, the average American person out here, they're not asking for much. As a matter of fact, I don't really think they're asking for anything but their government to govern. Their government to govern in favor of the American people. And I don't see that. I mean, we have imbalanced trade deals. And I want to continue to say this, and uh, I ask all you folks out there that are involved in your uh, political world and wherever you are and whatever part of the country you're in, uh, to go in and write your congressmen, state representatives, senators, the whole nine, and ask them what their view is on these imbalanced trade deals that America has been dealt in that have been signed into by these power-hungry autocrats in Washington. You know, do they agree with these lopsided trade deals out here that have shipped all our jobs out to China, that have shipped them all out to third world countries, Mexico, that sort of thing? Those folks that got laid off of those jobs, they got to go back into a job sector where they have to compete with 20 million illegal immigrants that are in this country illegally, that are that just basically created a black market in, of employment. These people are getting paid on average, 25 cents on the dollar, and you're asking these folks that lost their jobs to China, lost their jobs to Mexico, to compete with the 20 million illegals that are in their homeland right now that are devaluing the cost of labor. And you see, that's just a minor, you know, a few issues that I've brought up that none of the candidates at all have acknowledged. As a matter of fact, they've embraced the complete opposite. They've they've embraced the complete opposite. This is what I'm saying, folks, and this is why I'm being criticized by all these Republicans. And I'm a conservative. I'm a lifelong Republican, folks. 
but I'm being criticized by all the Republicans because I won't turn a blind eye to my principles. And what are the principles? First of all, I'm a conservative, but I'm an old-school Republican. I thought the Republican Party was about less government, less government in your faces, less regulation, fiscal responsibility. And what do you got? You got John McCain, based on this man's legislation, this guy is a damn blatant, unapologetic liberal. It's just pathetic, folks. It's pathetic that the Republican Party, who's been hijacked by complete liberalism, is trying to force true conservatives, true Republicans, to vote against their traditional principles for the sake of party loyalty, folks. It's just ridiculous. And now that I'm trying to bring that into light, you, you know, and, and, and if you've been listening to my past shows, you know. You know the type of flack I've been getting into out here. Now, because I'm bringing all this to light, all these Republicans are just, just they're utilizing the same methods of agitation that those left-wingers use on me. I'm used to the left. Believe me, the left-wingers, I mean, there is no substance over there. I, I, I mean, I... I'm ready for all their personal attacks. That's all they're due. Their whole substance is based on propaganda. But Republicans used to be about the issues. Remember that? They used to be about the issues. Now that I'm trying to bring it into light that the Republicans are no longer Republicans, they're no longer about fiscal responsibility, uh, they're no longer about uh, uh, helping the American family, the American person. They're not doing it, folks. And like I stated over and over, these imbalanced trade deals that have sent all of our manufacturing textile jobs, all the means of production outside of the United States, in communist China, in Mexico, I mean, you have these people that are out of work because the manufacturing jobs went out of the country. They're trying to get work in their own homeland, and they're having to compete with 20 million illegal immigrants that have created a black market of employment. These illegal immigrants are getting, on average, 25 cents on the dollar, and you're asking these poor people that have lost their jobs to compete with that in their own homeland. I mean, give me a break, folks, and this is why I'm saying none of these candidates that are running for president are, are acknowledged any of this crap. And I don't understand it. If somebody could please tell me, I, I'd like for somebody to get up on here and tell me why, what's going on. The number 646-652-4869 is the number to call. These are just random thoughts, folks. Random thoughts. And that's all there is to it. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to extend once again my uh, President's Day welcome to everybody who's tuning in. President's Day, you know. You know, these were presidents that actually stood by their principles, you know. Principles, it, you know, it, it seems to be a weak issue in this day and age of society. You know, this uh, issue about principles. I, you know, I, I remember the Republican Party used to live by them. They used to breathe by them. That's what they used to be about. But now it seems to me that even though we have somebody who's going to be not only the leader of the party but a leader of the free world, or the supposed free world at this point, who's completely contradicted the principles of what the, not only what the party was founded on, but the principles that rooted the party, conservatism, and just completely out the window. And, and, and I just don't understand how they expect us as conservatives, expect us as old-school Republicans that want less government, want less taxes, want less regulation. I just don't understand, man. I, I mean, I, I've been argued many times that, hey, look, okay, it's the lesser of two evils. It's the lesser of two evils. But that's not fair, okay? Because there wasn't evils. There was actual uh, prospects that were conservative that still abided by the traditional Republican values. Less government, less taxes. All right, securing the borders, securing these 20 million illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor. But now I don't know where America's headed, folks, and this is what scares me, and I don't understand why it's not scaring more folks out here. Look, I'm not some Alex Jones nut job, believe me. I mean, I've listened to all his malarkey. All he is is a ridiculous buffoonery, a scaremonger, an idiot that's trying to sell uh, 
videotapes, books. Uh, you know, but the only reason I know about Alex Jones, folks, is because I'm from Texas. Okay, <laughs> and this idiot's from Texas, and he's got—he's actually got a radio show that's broadcasted on Texas airwaves out here. And he's been hollering about, you know, things going haywire since the 90s, and he, you know, none of it's come to flourish, and now he's, you know, continuing on with his garbage. So I want to let you know right now, I'm not trying to say anything, any conspiracies in the works or anything, but just looking at what's going on around us right now, just by plain observation, common sense, historical knowledge, empirical evidence, one has to be very suspicious about all the nefarious activities that's going on in our government, about the lackadaisical approach of by closing our borders, the lackadaisical approach of getting the illegal immigrants that are just fluctuating. Yeah. I mean, I can go on and on. It seems like I'm a broken record at this point with some of these issues, folks, but I mean... I mean, these are the basic issues in my view. I mean, it's not that difficult. I mean, all we need is to bring back American uh, American integrity, American work ethic, American production. You know, that's the only thing that we need to do, folks. I mean, let's get our head out of our asses out here. You know, we're so involved with keeping up with the Joneses. We're so worried about getting the you know the latest gadget so you can show your friends and their you know your friends can give you that little five minutes of adulation of having the first thing on the block. They all cop you and you're cool for about what a week. Big deal. We need to worry about production, folks. We need to worry about entrepreneurship. We need to worry about saving a little bit of our money and at the same time making our money work for us. Invested in production, invested into the economy, do something. We need a president that's going to make these multinational corporations that were born right here in America. We need him to say, hey, wait a minute. Are you an American company or are you just a, a multinational company that has no loyalty to America? And if they say the latter, well, he needs to deal with them accordingly. We need to bring back manufacturing right here in America. We need to go back to the world trade negotiating table and have some of these lopsided trade deals that we have with these countries that are milking us for all we're worth because we're a, con a consumeristic society. All we do is consume. No production whatsoever. I mean, no production, folks. And this is the problem. And we don't have a president that's, you know, on the contrary, you're having presidential nominees that are just telling us they'll give us things. They're going to give it to us. Do you want free health care? Here, we're going to give it to you. We're going to give you some money. You need money? We're going to give you money. Here, here's a, here's 600 a 1000 Here, 1000 bucks. Here you go. Go buy some Chinese goods while you're at it. Go ahead, buy Chinese goods, the same goods that put you out of work, the same goods that are basically paying for... Chinese nuclear warheads to be directed right at the United States of America, paying for the one child per family uh, ridiculous uh, social engineering situation they have out there in China, paying for having four Chinese males for every one female in China. That's what we're paying for. And we're embracing this Mao Zedong garbage. I, I, and it's just sickening to me. You know, it really is sick. I, th I, I just, it's just, it's a sick world out here, man. We, we need to get back to America. Bottom line, folks, America, America, America. Remember us. Remember us over here, folks. America. Constitution, forefathers. Hello, I'm over here now. It's President's Day. Happy Happy President's Day, folks. I just don't get it. Anyway, uh, six four six six five two four eight six nine. This is just a random presidential uh, or President's Day uh, broadcast here. Uh, it's been kind of a funny news day, you know. It came out today. I, I I don't really give much credence in this, but Barack Obama. I just wanted to bring it up in this uh, broadcast. I thought it was rather funny. 
he plagiarized uh, somebody's speech uh, verbatim, and I'm sure you've already heard about it by now. I mean, it, it's all over the mainstream media, and on top of which, I think it's all over YouTube and all the other uh, Internet uh, content outlets. And I just think it goes to show you what kind of ridiculous garbage we have as our leaders. The unoriginal, you know, got to copy speeches, uh, you know, uh, no type of direction. This is a guy who's talking about change, and yet he can't even make his own speech, for Christ's sake. He can't even change the words. He, you know, he could have gotten the idea from the speech and just kind of changed a few words, and they wouldn't have been able to blatantly uh, accuse him of plagiarism. He even had the whole, the poor schmuck that he stole it from say, yeah, yeah, we're friends, you know, we, we do that. I thought that was ridiculous, folks. I, I don't mean to give that much of a talking point on this program, but I just want to show you that none of these people could care. They could care less about us. And, I mean, these people are autocrats. What we need to understand is we need to hold these people accountable for real issues. Don't make them have us divisive. Uh, they have these divisive issues, uh, you know, kind of control us out here. Men versus women, you know, race versus this race. And, and it's just, it's garbage. What we need to do is demand some real issues out of these people if they want our votes. All right, John McCain wants my vote. He's going to have to talk out of his, uh, you know, economically feeble mind and start producing some economic substance on how to get our economy back on the road and how we can continue to still maintain our American sovereignty based on this dying dollar. I want him to talk about fiscal responsibility. I want him to talk about him not putting regulation in our lives because he's a power-hungry uh, minion. Uh, I, I want to hear some substance out of McCain. He starts talking substance like that, I'll vote for the man. But until then, he hasn't acknowledged. First of all, he's wiped his ass with the First Amendment with McCain fine gold. He's he's given an F you to all the conservatives out there. That's what McCain's done. He stuck his middle finger out, and he gave an F you to all the conservatives out there. He says he's going to do things his way. That's all he is. He's the maverick and all this other garbage. Let me tell you something, McCain. If you want my vote, if you want the conservatives vote, you better start providing some substance on how you're going to create some real economy back in America. How you're going to change the fact that America doesn't produce anything besides entertainment and cheeseburgers. And what you're going to do to stimulate this economy, to bring back manufacturing, to bring back jobs, and not sit here and spew off more and more of these entitlement programs that are in your legislation. 20 million illegals for amnesty. Are you kidding me? You want to give 20 million illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor for people that have lost their jobs out here in America already to communist China, to Mexico, and you're having them to compete with people that are in the country illegally? These people are getting paid 25 cents on the dollar, and you're expecting American folks to compete with that? How dare you? That's what I'm talking about, folks. I want to start hearing some of that this time around. Let's start hearing a little bit about the American people. I mean, is that so much to ask? I mean, am I, am I off my rocker or something? Let's talk about the American people, folks. I mean, this race has been about nothing. It's been about absolute malarkey. It's what it's been about. I'm not giving any kind of credence in what the left is doing. I mean, the left are all, you know, Fruit Loop and socialist quasi-communists. They're blatant about it. They're not hiding it. But this John McCain is a, is a, is a wolf in sheep's clothing, folks. It's what he is. Just look at his legislation. Look at how he's extended his little authority as a senator. I mean, he's extended his authority so much, it's ridiculous. He's wiped his derriere with the First Amendment, with McCain-Feingold. I mean, McCain-Feingold took, took out one of the greatest conservatives ever to serve as a public servant for the United States government, Tom DeLay. Now it was McCain-Feingold that did that. And it's ridiculous. And I, I just don't know what to say. I mean, the, I don't know what these people want me to do here. 
you know, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of hate mail, you know, uh, and, and usually I get it from a lot of left wingers, you know, because they don't like me for nothing, you know. The thing, actually, I, I get hate mail now that they they hear me getting all upset and screaming, you know, I'm, I'm about to break something, all this other nonsense, and then and then uh, they, they they laugh and they 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 say things like, I hope that you have a heart attack one of these shows or. I hope I start collapsing from a stroke or something of that nature, but uh, the bottom line is, folks, I'm going to keep coming up here and saying these things that affect the American people. And what affects the American people? Well, whether or not we're going to be able to have the opportunity to go out and work and get a job, to be able to maintain sustenance for ourselves, and then to be able to have a little bit left over after all that, to be able to use for our own consumptive purposes. Uh, oh, man, I'm telling you, it's frustrating. You know, I don't know. I don't hear any of these candidates talking about anything but handouts, subsidies. That's all I hear. That's all I hear, folks. Anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody for tuning in with me this evening. This is a President's Day edition of True Conservative Radio. You can call up uh, 646-652-4869. Let me know what's on your mind. You are listening to true conservative radio. You know, the, the bad part about it is, folks, is that I, I'm not saying anything that the average American person doesn't feel. You know, you got a lot of Republicans out here chastising me because I'm not going to vote for John McCain. You know, they, they're, they're calling me a traitor. They, they, they think that I'm helping the left. They actually think I want these damn communists in office. I don't want these communists. I don't want Hillary Rotten Clinton. I don't want Barack Hussein Obama. But I sure as hell don't want a wolf in a sheep's clothing that's sitting over there, and I know it, with that, with that crap-eating grin every time he gets on a podium. Oh, yeah, you can tell that prostate-infected piece of trash has liberal written all over his face, and I can read right through it. He hasn't said nothing to consolidate what he has and say, hey, look, let's go ahead and let's make some sort of uh, a truce, conservatives. Let's stick together. Let's let's keep the party together. I'll compromise on certain issues. He hasn't said, hey, look, I tell you what, you want the borders closed, okay? Not only will we close the border, which is the only thing he's he has kind of vaguely hinted around, but let's take the 20 million people that are devaluing the cost of labor right here in America. Let's take those people and get them the hell out of the country. How about that? How about that? It's unfortunate, folks. It's that a bunch a whole array of things. You know, we need to we need to go back to the World Trade to negotiating table, and we need to negotiate some better trade deals with these ridiculous countries that have taken jobs away from America. Because these are lopsided, folks. They're very complicated. Don't get me wrong. They're structured to be complicated, so you don't know about them. And like I stated previous, folks, I'm not some Alex Jones nut job out here, okay? I'm a lifelong Republican, okay? I'm a Republican, but but to see what's going on right now, to see the lackadaisical approach of what's happening to the weakening dollar, to see the lackadaisical approach of what kind of immigration problem we have here, to see the lackadaisical approach to all these supposed free trade deals that we're basically getting into without the uh, American public's consent, it's starting to become a little bit weird to me that all this is just happening out of mere coincidence. I think that there's some sort of nefarious activities that are happening, and I'm just sitting here and trying to spawn debate about it. That's all I'm doing. All I want people to do is talk about these issues, the devaluing of the American dollar, the fact that in high-end retail stores in New York City right now, they won't take American money. That's right. They won't take your Benjamin Franklin, your Andrew Jackson. No, they're not going to take it out there. They want to take euros. Is that where we're headed, folks? I've read a little bit about this Amero project, and I thought it was a bunch of malarkey. But let me tell you something. It's starting to be a little bit more suspicious as far as I'm concerned. 
And I don't really want to get into all that, folks. All I'm simply saying, let's get back to America. It's President's Day. Let's talk about America and America's problems, real Americans, people that spill blood for this country, that live for this country, that are loyal for this country, to the Constitution. Let's talk about President's Day, presidents that stood by principles for America. And let's continue that tradition, folks. Let's take our head out of our asses for a couple of minutes, okay? Let's put down the damn boob tube remote control, pick up a damn book, or you know what? If you have an Internet connection and if you're listening to the sound of my voice, obviously you do, go out and do some reading. Do some research, for Christ's sake. Read up a little bit about what's going on around you. Just look around you, folks. You got American businesses not accepting American dollars. Are you kidding me? Did you ever think you'd see the day? It's ridiculous, folks, and nobody's talking about it. All anybody's talking about is how we need to stick by the party. Oh, we need to vote for John McCain, even though he goes completely against the Republican principles and wipes his ass with the conservative principles. We got to go turn a blind eye to that. Go to the voting booth and give his damn vote away. That's what we're gonna. That's what the damn Republicans are telling people to do. That's just great. That's just great. This is the new communist socialist America, folks. This is what we're living in nowadays. We've sold our souls to all these morons in China, all these people that we owe all this debt to. We need to start chomping off on this debt. You people don't understand. Our, our dollar is worth diddly. That's why you're seeing people in New York City, high-end retail stores, no longer accepting the American dollar, and all they're accepting is euros, the euro dollar. This is serious crap. I mean, do you remember the day when you could go anywhere across the world, pull out of Benjamin Franklin, and no matter what Timbuktu country you were in, they were more than willing to accept that piece of paper. Do you remember that day? Well, it's starting to become a little scarce now, folks. It, it, it's starting to become a little bit scary to me here. And I don't understand why nobody else is talking about this. Everybody's, you know, sticking, like I said, they're sticking a Kentucky Fried Chicken greased, thumb up their poop chutes, seeing how it feels up there, uh, 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 you know, because they're getting used to how they're going to get done up the derriere by McCain. And they don't know what the hell they're talking about out here. I mean, do you know what the Republican platform is besides the war on terror? Which I'm not against, folks. I was for the war in Iraq. I was for the war in Afghanistan. I believe that we were actually sowing the seeds of democracy in the part of the world that was being anesthetized since the day they were born with Islamic theocracy. I believe that. I still believe that. But what I don't understand about John McCain, John McCain wants to continue the war into Iran, into Pakistan, into Syria, which I'm not against, folks. But how are we going to continue to be the bastion of democracy? How are we going to continue to go into the international community and give people democracy when we're going to have democracy taken away right here in America? That's what I'm asking, okay? That's my simple point, okay? How about that? I mean, I look, just because I'm voting against John McCain, some have insinuated that I'm against the war on terror. Can you believe this ridiculous mumbo-jumbo malarkey. I mean, you've got the right, the people on the Republican side, and I'm a lifelong Republican, damn it. You've got people on the Republican side trying to twist my words and say, just because I'm against John McCain, I'm against the war on terror. And that's a bunch of crap, and anybody out there that suggests that, you're an absolute nimrotic buffoonery that needs to get kicked upside your fat jelly ass, with all due respect. Anyway, folks, give me a call right now, 646-652-4869. This is True Conservative Radio being broadcasted live at the Blog Talk Radio Network. I encourage anybody, if you're up at night and you have nothing to do, just kicking back, having a few beers, uh, eating a pizza, whatever you're doing, go to blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, check out the archive, and have a few laughs with us, because, uh, you know, we, we have a whole bunch of shows, and... 
you know, if I, I just I just want to encourage people all the time to you know listen to the archives, listen to how Buck Wild sometimes get things get all in the name of trying to progress politics and, and, and thought in America. Go ahead and take a look at the archive. I'm just trying to suggest that to all of you. Anyway, folks, if you have anything that you want to add to this conversation, give me a call right now. Give me a call, 646-652-4869. I want to thank everybody who's in the chat room right now. What's going on, Ozone? What's going on, Heather? Free is in the chat room. What's going on to you people out there? Hopefully everybody is tuning in with me and is having a great President's Day, or as great as can be. I know that we're having turbulent times here in America. I know that things are going up in price. Your pay is going down. The amount of the dollar is not going very far, and I know it's getting tough on you folks, but you need to get your head out of your ass, okay? You need to take your head out of your fat ass and understand that there is a reason behind that, and you have to understand why it's happening. Once you understand that, then you can go to your government. Remember, this is your government. You can go to them and demand them to put more emphasis on these problems that affect you and me and everybody as an American person. But until we start educating ourselves in what actually is the root problem to all of our problems currently right here in America, we're not going to be able to solve them. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to have some bureaucrat that's probably guided through some uh, ridiculous uh, corporate uh, lobbyist to gear his way to uh, laws being passed that is more favorable to the corporate interests and not to the people's interests. So that's why I'm saying, folks, let's educate ourselves out here. Let's understand that all we need is some economy. We need to start producing things out here. We need a government that's conducive to helping us produce things. We don't produce anything. We pro- what do we produce? Rap music. Oh, that, that's a real big contribution to a, a human enlightenment. Uh, we produce movies. I mean, look at the movies we're coming out with. What, Harry Potter? I mean, these ridiculous mythological mumbo-jumbo, keep-your-mind-in-the-clouds garbage. Uh, you know, we're, uh, you, you get the drift. Entertainment, okay? Entertainment and cheeseburgers. Not that I'm against cheeseburgers, folks. Don't get me wrong. I think that the United States probably probably produces one of the damn best cheeseburgers on the face of the universe. But gosh darn it, we're going to need to produce something a little bit more than that. Something that we can export, something that's demanded by the international community so that we can be the leader once again in not only military but economy. Because they all intertwine, folks. If our economy cripples, then our country cripples. Our military force cripples if our economy cripples, folks. And we cannot let the economy cripple. You understand that? We've we got to get a hold of all the spending that we're doing. We've got to get a hold of the fact that we're not producing anything as a people. We've got to get innovative. We don't need a public education system that's producing a bunch of products that's not innovative, non creative. We've got a public education system right now that is retarding creativity, that is retarding critical thinking, that's retarding the ability to think outside the box and to be able to think creatively to possibly uh, create uh, solutions to new problems, to new, uh, to new uh, innovations, to, to things that will uh, revolutionize our technology, uh, medical industry, robotics. Who the hell knows, folks? But we'll never know unless we get a hold of everything around us right now. There's a lot of problems in America, and I know it's all hitting people at once. Every time I, I, I talk on this uh, blog talk radio network, I spew off a lot of problems at people, and people are like, gosh darn, are we really that screwed up? I mean, I, I thought I was living pretty good. I mean, I thought America was great. I mean, I can go right now, 3 in the morning, in my dirty underwear and get myself a triple cheeseburger. Well, that's not America, folks. And it's not going to be that way for too much longer. It's going to be an economically depressed uh, hellhole where everybody is in debt. They have no opportunity to own anything. And we need to get our head out of our asses and understand that we need to start producing things. We need a president that's going to spawn jobs in America, whatever it takes. We need jobs in America. You know, we don't need people to get handouts like those people on the left are suggesting. Here, let me give you everything from the government's hand. That's socialism, folks. And every form of socialism historically has failed. 
and I don't want to be a part of a failure. Uh, and we're not a failure, folks. We are the greatest social experiment on the face of the universe. The Constitution is the most brilliant document ever written on the face of the planet. It gave man unalienable rights that should never be tampered with. And I don't understand why we're sitting here, sitting on our thumbs and watching it all corrode around us. Like I said, I'm not some conspiracy theorist nut. I'm just saying, look at the elections. Listen to the debates. It's malarkey. It has nothing to do with our problems. Remember, this is our government, folks. This is our government. You know, we can go and write our congressmen, write our senators, and tell them what concerns us as American people. And what concerns us is that there's no jobs out here for us to go out so we can get ourselves out of our own situations, so we can get ourselves out of debt. There's not enough jobs out here to do. And the jobs that are here, we're having to compete with 20 million illegal immigrants that are basically devaluing the cost of labor, I mean, it's no wonder that the the family is being decimated. It's no wonder that people are out here just accepting handouts, and that's all there is to it. We need some opportunity out here, people, and that's all I'm asking from any of the candidates out here, especially from John McCain, who's supposed to be a Republican. Let's talk about how we're going to get America rolling again, being the leaders again with the greatest minds, with the greatest products, with the greatest innovations. Let's talk about that, presidential candidates. You know, and they keep talking about, oh, you know, we need to reinvest in green jobs. You know, have you heard this in these stupid debates? Green, oh, we got to get green jobs. Yeah, shove your green jobs up your cream cornhole or whatever, whatever, whatever that statement was, shove them up your cornhole, because let me tell you something, this whole garbage about global warming is another socialist agenda to tax you, and not only tax you, but to tax you for breathing. And if you don't believe me, why don't you take a look at how they want to tax carbon emissions. What are carbon emissions, folks? What are carbon emissions? That's what you breathe out. Look, listen, I breathe in oxygen, I breathe out carbon dioxide. And you see, because I do that to live, they want to tax me because I'm contributing to global warming. That's my carbon footprint. Have you heard that word, carbon footprint? It's malarkey, folks. Don't listen to this garbage. Now, I agree with everybody that the damn ice caps are melting, and it's a serious situation, and we need to possibly get people away from the coasts, if you will. All right, But it has nothing to do with mankind, folks. The, the sun is getting hotter. All right? I, I mean, I'm an, I like astronomy, okay? I, I always watch the, the NASA channel. It's very interesting to me. But if you read what has happened in the Mars ice caps, and you can Google this up or whatever your source of information of searching for your own information, you can look it up for yourself. The sun is getting hotter. And actually, the Mars ice caps are melting at even a faster rate of speed than the ice caps right here in the, uh, in the Earth. So I don't believe this global warming malarkey. I am not going to let these people tax me for breathing. I'm sorry. And if everybody wants to look at me cross-eyed, you know, you notice how all the media is catching wind with this. Oh, we're going green and green this, green that, like it's a damn religion or something. Now, do I agree that maybe we should recycle a little more? Sure. Let, let's advocate recycling, okay? Let's not advocate the fact that we need to tax our future generations for breathing. And that's exactly the agenda for this whole green movement. Don't listen to these people. It really disturbs me to hear the Democrat candidates touting all this. We need to invest more in green industries. It's garbage, folks. It's garbage. We need to talk about innovation, what's going to progress mankind, something that everyone's going to need, that's going to want. You know, that's what spawns innovation. We need to understand that there's needs that everybody needs. And we need innovators to fulfill those needs and make them easier, make them better for mankind. That's what creates economies. That's what spawns real trade, that sort of thing. And that's what creates jobs, folks. 
And that's what we need. We need jobs in America. That's what we need. We need to create jobs. Not everybody wants a handout. I'm sure that everybody right now that's collecting a handout, uh, look, I'll be more than willing to say that maybe 70, 80 percent of them are more than happy to continue to accept those handouts for as long as the government's given to them. But I tell you, there's a good chunk of those people that want to get the hell out of being an entitlement generation, and they want to go out, work for themselves, get themselves out of their own situation, and to be able to be a, a, a working person with some net worth, with some integrity, uh, walking around w with substance to themselves, in my view, instead of being some sort of sheep or a lab rat being fed a food pellet, in my view. Anyway, uh, 419, you're on the air. Hey, Ghost, this is Heather. Hey, Heather, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Well, just uh, ranting and raving about the obvious. Oh, I, I hear you. I was just going to say, and put that out there, that... Um, I don't have my my computer is probably about to blow up. It's just not working. But I wanted to let you know that um, John McCain is the person who proposed um, the highest tax increase for gas. He's a pro when he becomes president, he's proposing a tax increase of fifty cents per gallon on gasoline. And, and how is that going to help the American economy? Right? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I don't understand the logic behind that. It's just un. It's unbelievable thinking. That's, one of, that's part of the whole um, carbon emissions, um, I guess, agenda that he has, is that um, gas is going to go up 50 cents per gallon. And that's not even taking into consideration the other uh, variables that go into gas prices going up. I mean, I, yeah, I'm absolutely so mad about that it's unbelievable it, it, it is unbelievable because how are you gonna uh, you know expect people to get to work you know you know most people don't live by where they work in america so what happens they have to drive to work and uh, you know because these people are encouraging uh you know big vehicles i'm talking about the uh, auto industry everybody uh, hopped on the suv bandwagon and now everybody's hooked on an suv that they got to pay on for the next seven years and if you got John Turncoat McCain in office, adding fifty cents on a gasoline is probably going to continue to go up to about four or five gal a four or five dollars a gallon. I mean, it, it's a bad situation on top of the subprime mortgage crisis, on top of all the layoffs that are happening, on top of the devaluing of the dollar, on top of the twenty million illegal. I mean, I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, I know they're forecasting for the summer for gas to get up to four dollars, and I believe it's. 450 per gallon without any, you know, external taxes. I mean, that's the forecast for the summer. So pretty much no one's going to be going anywhere. <laughs> I, I I believe it. I mean, you know, the, this gas is getting unbearable. Uh, but the bad part about it is it, it, it's just I, I don't mind the, the, the price increase. I understand that supply and demand, I'm a free market person, that sort of thing. But to add another 50 cents on top of the burden – given to us uh, based on supply and demand is just ridiculous. And I, I don't understand why John McCain would do such a thing. And it just goes to show you, and what I've been saying on the show the whole time, he's a liberal. I mean, this whole green movement, this whole global warming garbage, it's all uh, a socialist, leftist-based agenda. And they want to tax us for the most simplistic thing as breathing. And that's a carbon emission. I mean, uh, you know, I think I learned in science, and I think when I was in fifth grade, that what we breathe out, the trees and the plants breathe in. So how is what we breathe out is a bad thing. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm, I'm not sure. I know that there's a guest in the chat room, but who is the other person besides myself? Uh, it's ozone. Oh, it's ozone. Okay, because I was I thought it was political intervention because I can't even move the screen on my computer right now. Um, but what I was gonna, what I was thinking. Because last night after the show was over, I went to a show that was hosted by Political Intervention and Jen, and it's like all they were talking about were their past drug uses. I mean, they never even addressed the biggest. I mean, that, what does that their have past, to do with their their past drug usage? That's yeah, like with smoking marijuana and thinking that it should be legal. But I'm like, I'm looking at you know what's going on, and they're supposed to be, I guess you know, the leading in the conservative category on blog talk radio. And that's what they fill their time with, which is just 
odd to me. Well, I wasn't aware of that particular show, but uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying that we need to talk about something that is a little bit uh, more important to the American psyche. And the American psyche is, is that we just want to go to work. We want to be able to support our family, support ourselves, be able to maintain sustenance, and have a little bit more left over to be able to use at our leisurely dispense, you know, or, or, or our, uh, our, our personal stash, if you will. And I look at, I mean, it's just... I, I know Jen, she's like really big at bragging about her position as a political, you know, in the political category for conservative um, blog talk radio. But what is she using her platform for? It's just, it's, I don't understand how she's getting her point across when, or, you know, the ideas of the conservative movement when, you know, what she's talking about is pretty, you know, to the left, if you ask me. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I've I've been the first one to say that, Heather. That this this uh, Jane of the Jungle is is a closet liberal. I mean, she's uh, a blatant atheist. She said that to me on another show. And on top of which, I mean, a lot of I mean, she is from California though. So this this could be that new Californian Republican garbage that elected Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's true. Absolutely, because I, I don't really understand where she's coming from. But I guess it's not neither here or there. I just hope that I don't know. I just hope that as time goes on, people will understand that it's a bigger deal. Everything that's being discussed, everything that's kind of to come at this point, it has the possibility to really affect everybody. It's like no one will really be immune by an economic collapse this time around. I mean, I know in the 30s and, you know, the late 20s, the Rockefellers, and you had, you know, these prestigious families that pretty much withstood that era unscathed. But right now it's going to be really difficult to pick someone. I mean, everyone has the ability to be affected, and I hope people don't lose sight of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm very concerned about the devaluing of the American dollar and how – you know, there's shops actually in America right now that will no longer accept the American dollar. I mean, what what's going on here? Do you remember? Oh, I, I don't know if you've been across the, the world, but I, I've been in a few places, and I had all I had was the American dollar on me. Of course, I had traveler's checks and that sort of thing, but I had a few bucks. I pull out those uh, uh, presidents, and well, lo and behold, they'll accept it, you know, no matter where I was across the world. And I'm sure I wouldn't be able to do that anymore. I understand that the currency of the day, not only in the international community, but now in certain portions of America, is the euro dollar. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, is this the new America that we're living in here? That's what I don't understand, why, why people aren't talking about more of this. Absolutely, and I think that you touched on it briefly. I haven't done that much research on it myself. But the Amero, uh, it's yeah. becoming. I, I had I heard it mentioned on CNBC about a week and a half ago. I know that it's been something that was kind of a, I guess, a mythical type term that was used by some people. But it's becoming to the point where. I think that it may actually have some credence if it's been mentioned on CNBC. Absolutely. You know, I've done some extensive research, and uh, basically I've been taking uh, old video clips of what these past, uh, the president of Mexico, um, the president of, uh, of the United States, the president of Canada, I mean, they have negotiated certain agreements out here. That they, I mean, and, and and you can look this up on YouTube if you don't believe me. Vicente Fox said this on a Larry King show. Larry King asked him in the exchange, "Are you talking about a universal currency for Mexico, Canada, and the United States?" And Vicente Fox said, "Well, you know, that's a long term, as if that that was in the works of some sort." And you 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 take you know that type of rhetoric. It, it may be small. It may be something big. But you take that in, in, in with the facts of the fact that we're having a devalued currency in America to the point where it's going to be worth nothing. It's going to it's not even going to be worth the paper it's written on. I mean, this is very scary stuff. I mean, it seems to me that uh, you know it, I'm not suggesting any. I've, I've never ever been a conspiracy theorist. I hate conspiracy theorists because it, it's they, they deviate the conscience from the actual problems at hand. But I think that there's something very nefarious going on here. When we're having a devalued currency, uh, we're having uh, an absolute just influx of 20 million illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor. 
You've got tr- uh, imbalanced trade deals that the United States is involved in with China and, and Mexico and, and other third world nations that have basically exported all the means of production outside of the United States, leaving everybody jobless and having to compete with these same illegal immigrants that are making a black market in employment. And you take all the, I mean, and that's a mouthful, believe me, but that's what's affecting America, and that's what people need to start talking about a little bit more instead of this ridiculous party loyalty garbage that I keep getting blamed for. Oh, absolutely. And I, I guess I, would, I wouldn't really consider the idea of wondering what is really going on, a conspiracy theorist, because there's a lot of things that have happened in the past seven and a half years, or in this case, probably about whatever George W. Bush came into office. There's just a lot of things that are happening that are really hard to ignore at this point. So I think that we do have an idea that there is um, there is an enemy out there. I'm, nobody's saying that Apple, I would never say that there's not. But the things that have led up to, especially the past four years with the war in Iraq, and the economic situation here, I would like to know what the underlying reason of it really is. Because I feel like there's more to it than going after terrorists. I don't know, because I know that there's a, supposedly a rumor that Iraq, prior to when we went in there, I need to see if I can find an article on this, but Iraq, prior before we went in there, was discussing um, possibly transitioning their oil market to the euro as well, and that's why people think the real underlying reason why we went over there may actually be based on money. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I hate to say that I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like we're at a point where there's so much available information that if you don't think twice about something, I think you're doing yourself a disjustice. Well, you know, I'd like to think that the reason we went into Iraq was to, uh, you know, sow the seeds of democracy in the heart of the Middle East, because that's a holy land out there in the heart of Islam. And we have a lot of Islamic uh, theocratic nutjobs out here that are born to believe in that America is the great Satan, and that, uh, you you know, to kill yourself, and to kill as many Westerners as possible is going to win you some sort of a religious significance. And I feel that this was more of a uh, war of ideology, just like George Bush said. And we go out there, we kind of sow the seeds of democracy out there so that the outside countries that are being subjugated by these theocratic zealots, these dictators, these tyrants, there are people who look at Iraq and Afghanistan and say, hey, wait a minute, why can't we can't, how come we can't have this? They'll revolt, and democracy would spread, which I, it, it, it seems completely, uh, completely feasible to me. But now it's not looking like that's what's happening, in my view. Absolutely, because I think that the whole way that they're raised, regardless of uh, being Muslim and, and into Islam, regardless of if they're terrorists or not, the way that they're raised is very... It's a very patriarchal society, and it would never lend itself to democracy by just by default based on how they're raised. So I think that we would hope they would embrace democracy, but their thought process and their their like you said their ideology is really not geared towards that. And I I hope that we can just make sure that they're not ruled by a dictator or a tyrant. Absolutely, but to say that we can instill our our beliefs and our ideals on them, it's going to be really difficult. And I think that in the long, I mean, there have been some good things coming out of Iraq. I mean, I, I did listen to your show that was in the archive where yeah. you had the speaker on, on, on the phone um, who did discuss about, you know, how they gave a teddy bear to a little girl and she sat down on the ground and she was sitting on, I think it was a improvi- improvised. Yeah, uh, imp- improvised explosive. explosive. Yeah. And I think that those type of situations are, they happen a lot more than we think. Um, But I think that, I I hope we don't get that mixed up for the fact that they really want to see. I I guess I'm just not really convinced just based on their belief system. Maybe as time goes on, and hopefully Iraq will be, uh, I guess, a benchmark in, I guess, freeing parts of the Middle East of dictators and that and such. But I think that for 
us to ignore China and then make Iraq the priority, I think that's going to not benefit us in the long run. I really don't. I think I, we should have done something with China, at least with, with some kind of discourse to try to get them away from their way of thinking right now. I, I agree. I completely agree about China. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I I do agree with the premise of why we went to Iraq. But at this point, it's not getting – I mean, I'm not saying it's not getting any better because it is. Yeah. But the bad part about it is is that we're losing, in my view, by electing any one of these presidential candidates. We are going to lose democracy, in my view. All these people want more regulation, more government in our faces, more taxes. All of these people want the same thing. Absolutely. And I feel, and I feel how are we as American people going to go out – and implement democracy in the international community when we're having it taken away here in America. I think it defeats the purpose. I agreed with the purpose of going out into the Middle East. I think that we need to do so because it's obvious that religious zealousy goes a long way. It'll make people think that they'll go to heaven if they kill themselves and kill other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that what you said going back to how we're losing our own, I guess, you know, democracy here in America. I mean, we have to look at things like the Patriot Act. I mean, it's getting and, – and then for people in my generation who are, let me see, 39 or younger who have to now get this real ID and you have to carry it around wherever you go, I mean, it's just – I don't understand what was the point of the Patriot Act if we now need this real ID. I guess I'm – maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but if we had the Patriot Act, then why do we all need to be monitored? I mean, that scares me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it scares me, too. I mean, I, I haven't had to get a national ID card yet, but uh, uh, if they start pushing for it, I mean, you better guarantee I'll be up on the show uh, talking about it because uh, I think that we need to continue American sovereignty, in my view. I'm an American. My, my family has spilt blood for this country all the way back to the beginning of this country, and and to sit here, actually, Texas, you know, I mean, when Texas was its own country. Um, but I'm just saying that, you know, we, we need to get back to what we used to be about. The, you know, what did, what did Superman say? Truth, justice, and the American way. Absolutely. But, yeah, I just hope that everyone does not lose sight of what's going on here. And I know people think that they're able to pay their bills, and so everything's great. But everything is fine, but it's it just could potentially get a lot worse. I just hope it. I hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. And I hope uh, that we're able to get out of this rut before everything hits the fan. Because I was reading today where a part of the Boris um, in, in, in Iran has actually opened today. Um, so not the whole the whole thing is not open, but the whole thing will open by the end of this year. But part of it's open. It's going to open in three parts, and one part of it's already open. So. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I feel like I'm in, like, the calm before the storm. That yeah. kind of thing is just really, it's really scary. <laughs> yeah, it is scary. Are you kidding me? I mean, this is a new generation, a, a new transition of power that we're seeing here in America. I mean, you know, we have a devalued currency. I don't know where we're going. I don't know where we're headed. We're not producing anything. We have no means of production here in America. We have a lot of people out here with no jobs that are having to compete with 20 million illegal immigrants that are in this country devaluing the cost of labor. We have imbalanced trade deals. I just don't understand what's going on out here. Absolutely. I don't understand either. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and listen to the rest of the show. I thank you for letting me vent. Just keep, you know, saying the same things that you're saying because hopefully when – I think when the time comes, a lot of people are going to gravitate towards actually talking about the issues instead of doing what Jenna the Jungle does, calling names, being very, you know, sophomoric about it, because this is a very serious situation. I mean, I guess, you know, she's in California and everything's fine now, but we really got to be serious about what's going on. And I personally thank you for, you know, keeping the show going and at least talking about things that nobody on Blog Talk Radio are even going there because what seems to be selling on Blog Talk Radio are – you know, everyone pretty much making fun or and then making a couple of jabs at liberals, but then, you know, talking about their personal lives on political conservative radio. It's like, I mean, that's not what I come here to listen to. I exactly. 
I mean, you can interject a couple of things so that people can understand. I mean, we know you're a person, but the bulk of their show is about talking about themselves. And I'm like, what? What kind of? You know, what does that? What good does that do, do anyone at this point? Because we're at a turning point, and I hope people don't lose sight of that. We are at a turning point, and and that's why I keep coming up on here. This is a serious show. I mean, I know I get upset at times, and I scream a little bit. I make some pop shots and that sort of thing. But I want to make people think that this is still America. We still believe in the Constitution. Uh, the president and everyone in Congress still swears an oath to that Constitution. This is still the American government ran by the people, for the people. And I think that what people need to understand is that uh, this government is not working for its people at this point. They, they, as a matter of fact, all these candidates for president want to put more government in our lives. They want to raise our taxes. They want to, you know, just completely go against what the American way is. And I think that most of these Americans out here, they need to take their heads out of their asses. And I hate to be so brash about certain things, but that's the only way people are going to listen out here and understand that we need to start talking about these things. We need to start talking about uh, making this devalued currency mean something again. We need to start talking about how we're going to produce something as an American economy and how we're going to create jobs for people instead of giving entitlements to everybody, you know? Absolutely, and I hope that people realize that a lot of things that are going on, I really think we should have the opportunity to vote for. I, I, I don't exactly. Know yeah, I don't even know if that's how that works. I need to really read up that on myself, but I think that some of these things should be voted on. Uh, especially some of these trade agreements that have happened here. Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's just very unnerving. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's disheartening, and I don't know where we're headed. I don't know where we're headed. Oh, wow. I, I, it's very, very scary. But thank you for letting me vent a little bit, and I'm going to be listening for the rest of the show. Thanks a lot, Ghost. No problem, Heather, and you're welcome anytime. You have a good one. Well, folks, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad, you know, Heather appreciates the commentary, and, and I appreciate everybody who everybody else who appreciates the commentary. But the bottom line is, folks, is that I was a Republican. I'm no longer a Republican because I've stated this uh, over and over and over again. Republicans have been hijacked by liberals. You have a liberal running as a Republican candidate right now, John Turncoat McCain. This man is a blatant liberal. He's going to put more government in our lives. He wants to tax us even more. And I don't understand. He's given an F.U. middle finger to the conservative movement. And I don't understand why the Republicans on the Blog Talk Radio Network are trying to chastise me because I won't vote against my principles. I mean, I remember when the Republican Party used to mean something. It used to mean less taxes, less government. Remember that? Less regulation, less government in our lives. None of these people, all right? None of these people that are running for president right now are acknowledging the problems that are happening to the average everyday American. And what are the problems, folks? What are the problems? The problem is is that we've got jobs that aren't paying worth diddly. And why are the jobs not paying worth diddly? Let's get to the root of the problem, folks. And, and I know that people that have listened to my program have heard me say this over and over again, but it needs to be said over and over again. Because people have had their heads in their asses. They're too worried about what animal is around uh, Paris Hilton's shoulder. They're, they're too worried about if uh, Britney Spears has shaved her melon again. That's what they're concerned with. The bottom line is, folks, is because the, the, the reason things are getting harder for folks out here is because you've got imbalanced trade deals that America is involved in that were signed by these power-hungry autocrats we send to Washington. All right? They signed these imbalanced trade deals that sent all the jobs outside of America into communist China, into Mexico, and other third world countries that basically left millions upon millions of Americans jobless. Now, what are those Americans to do? They've got to go out and get a job in, in, in an economy. And believe me, the American economy produces nothing, folks. There is no more manufacturing. There is no more big plants. There's nothing out here. The only thing we produce is entertainment and cheeseburgers, folks. And then those millions of folks that are out of jobs, they've got to compete with 20 million illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor. They're devaluing the cost of labor, folks. And then we wonder why what what in the blue hell is happening? 
This is what I'm saying. We need to talk about these things, and we need to force these politicians that are running for president, we need to force them to talk about it, folks. We need to start telling them, hey, we don't care about your little personal issues. You need to start talking about us, the American people, the people that give you the power. It's our acknowledgement of you people that gives you the power. You need to acknowledge us, for Christ's sake. You need to acknowledge the fact that prices are going up for products. The price of labor is going down because of 20 million illegals that are getting paid 25 cents on the dollar. These imbalanced trade deals that have sent the means of production outside of the United States, this public education system that's producing a lot of non-creative, non-innovative children, this public education system has retarded creativity, it has retarded critical thinking, and if you don't believe me, just go talk to a recent high school graduate or somebody in high school right now, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Lack of creativity. Lack of critical thinking. They don't know their asses from their elbow, and you, like, and, and you can thank public education for it. And this is your taxpaying dollars, folks. Public education is coming out of your pocket. And what kind of products are they producing? Absolute horse crap. That's what they're producing. And I don't understand why we have an American people. You know what? Let me strike that. I can understand why the American people are doofed into this public education scheme. You've got these teachers' unions that go out and they pull on the American heartstring. Oh, yeah, they're like, oh, the American teacher needs more money. We need more teachers. We need bigger schools. We need more administrators. This is all your money, folks. Idiots that sit on school boards are getting paid $600,000, $700,000 a year to sit on a school board and, and hit a damn gavel on a damn table. This is what I'm talking about, folks. You've got teachers out here that, no, that aren't teaching anything, and I have listeners that come in here into my chat room that call up my program all the time, and they say, Ghost, this public education system, they send my daughter, they send my son home with homework they don't even understand, and they expect me, the parent, to teach it to them. Why in the blue hell are they getting paid taxpaying dollars if they're not teaching our children? And this is what I'm talking about, folks. Public, educa public education, excuse me, is a false, rid ridiculous paradigm. There is no incentive, and I've stated this over and over again, there is no incentive for these public educators to make sure that your children are learning anything. And we're producing a bunch of idiots out here. I mean, you know, public education is not spawning any type of critical thinking. They're retarding creativity. That's why we're having a kind of lackadaisical attitude when it comes to innovation out here in America. That's why we don't produce anything, because this public education system is making our children into a bunch of men, a bunch of idiots. And let me tell you, if you're a teacher, and I get a lot of teachers that say they listen to me. I get all kinds of emails from teachers. They can't believe that I'm disrespecting them. Oh, <laughs> like I'm the bad guy or something. But let me tell you, teachers, something. You're not fooling anybody. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling anybody who sends their children to public school. You people aren't doing your job. And you want to know why you're not doing your job? Because you're a bureaucrat. And bureaucrats don't have to do their job. You want to know why they don't have to do their job? Because they're going to have the same job next year, folks. And they're going to have it the year after that and the year after that, and they could care less whether your child is, is taught a decent education or not, because they're going to have the job regardless. And this is what I'm telling you, folks. This is why I know public education is a farce, and we need to get rid of it. We need to scrap it. We need to get all these teachers, all these bureaucratic administrators, all these superintendent school board members, we need to scrap them and put them out of work. We need to privatize education, folks. That's what we need to do. That way we can have schools parents can choose from. They can go to a school, and a school has to sell a, has to sell a parent why this student should go to this school. They'll have to say, hey, wait a minute, we make sure our teachers teach our children. We make sure our teachers are qualified and not ex-hairdressers or trash collectors or enema bag cleaners. We make sure that our, that our teachers are qualified to teach our children, and that's what we strive to do.
And that's the way it should be, folks. Because nobody is talking about the issues that face America. And the issues that face America, folks, is the lack of jobs in America. The lack of economic opportunity in America. And why is there a lack of economic opportunity? Well, we have a devalue in dollar, folks. A devalue in dollar. You have uh, retail shops in New York City right now not accepting American dollars. That's right. They're only accepting euro dollars. That's right, euro dollars. You can go in there with a Benjamin Franklin and they're going to turn you away. Can't believe this. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Give me a call right now. I want to know if this really concerns you folks. Or are you one of the many out here like these Republicans that give me all kinds of garbage? They come into my chat room and flap their fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard, spreading all kinds of slanderous lies about me, spreading all kinds of personal attacks about me, because I won't vote against my principles and vote for that piece of prostate-infected piece of trash, John McCain, who's an obvious liberal, who's going to put more government in our faces, who's going to put more government regulation, who's going to increase taxes... They're upset because I won't vote for that piece of trash. I'm not voting for them, and I urge all you true conservatives, all you true Republicans, old school Republicans, the Republicans that still believed in less taxes. You understand that? You know it and I know it. Anyway, folks, I want to hear from you right now. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We're talking about anything and everything. This is a President's Day special about politics, about our current situation, about the devaluing of the American dollar, about the decimation of the American family, about the decimation of everything we know of as America, folks. I still believe in the Constitution. I still believe in America. And it seems to me that everybody's you know, sitting on their thumbs right now Wondering what in the blue hell is going to happen. I'm telling you what's going to happen, folks. This damn economy is going to corrode from the inside in because nobody is acknowledging the fact that we've got a corroded dollar. The United States economy produces absolutely nothing. All we're doing is sitting here watching everything corrode from the inside out, and we're, we're, we're glued to the boob tube watching ridiculous garbage like Survivor. And if Paris Hilton has a monkey on her damn lap. I mean, that's what we're worried about out here. You know, if Britney Spears, you know, shaves her chest again or whatever the hell. It's ridiculous, folks. We need to wake up. We need to start thinking about America. Remember us? Huh? Remember America? We need to start remembering that, folks. We need to start making sure that the integrity of our dollar is intact. I remember a day you could go anywhere in the international community and flash out a Benjamin Franklin, and no matter what damn language or what damn part of the country you were in, those people would accept that money. But nowadays you got people that don't want to accept it because the American dollar's falling through the tubes. You got American businesses right here in America that don't accept the American dollar anymore. They accept the euro, and I don't understand why no more nobody else is talking about it. I mean, this is scary, folks. It's a scary time, and I suggest everybody who's out there listening in, who's a true conservative, who's a true Republican, I, I wouldn't even participate in this particular presidential nomination. I, I wouldn't participate in it. You don't have a choice. you got left-wing, long-haired, liberal, bedwetting hippies on the left. I mean, if you compare a speech with Hillary Rodden Clinton, Barack Hussein Obama, and you compare it to a Fidel Castro or Hugo Chavez speech, it's a damn carbon copy. So you can forget about those pieces of trash on the left, but you've got John Turncoat McCain. He's two issues away, folks, from being a full-blown liberal. And I don't believe that he – I think he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, folks. I mean, just look at his legislation, for Christ's sake. He wants to give amnesty to these 20 million illegal, e illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor in America. This is why folks can't support their families out here anymore, because they're devaluing the cost of labor. 
And we need a politician who's going to acknowledge this crap. This is what I'm talking about, folks. The only way I'm ever going to think about voting for McCain, if he takes his head out of his prostate-infected ass and understands that he needs to deport all 20 million of these people, and I don't care where they're from. You know, these stupid liberals, they like to come into my chat room and try to put a racist spin on it. Let me tell you something. I don't care where you're from, all right? I don't care if you're an English tea-drinking butt boy, a, a, a French frog piece of illegal trash butt boy. I don't care if you're a, a, a Mexican. I don't care where you're from. If you're not from this country, get the hell out of here. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not in this country legally, get the hell out. You are devaluing the cost of labor. You are creating you are creating a black market for labor, folks. And I don't know how to say black market for labor in Spanish, but please, anybody who knows Spanish that's around an illegal immigrant, you tell them I just said that. It's ridiculous. I mean, this is what's unfortunate, folks. You know, and here I got Chicago land dead saying, please use my influence to pull for folks together with nice language. Let me tell you something, man. We're far beyond that political correctness stuff, sir. We're far beyond that. America is in grave danger. You don't understand. We have a collapsing dollar where you have shops right here in America, right here where me and my family spilled blood for this country for. We have American businesses only taking European money, that are only taking European money, that won't accept American dollars out here. You understand that? we got to devalue an American currency that's going to be worth jack here in the next few months if we don't start taking our head out of our asses, with all due respect, sir. And if you don't like my language, I'm sorry. You need some straight talk. We need to understand that we have lost way too many jobs in this country. The America doesn't produce anything. We produce absolutely nothing. We produce nothing but entertainment and cheeseburgers. And we need to understand that jobs are the only thing that's going to create us out or create us a better situation that's going to take us out of this situation, is what I meant to say. That's what we need to do, sir. We can't stop and, and start thinking, hey, we need to do better language, we need this, we need that. We need to talk about what's going to affect us as American people. Our lives, man. This is your life. This is my life. This is your children's life. This is your grandchildren's life. Do you understand? I mean, how are we going to live here if we, you see he left the room? You want to know why he left the room? Because he doesn't want to face reality, folks. He doesn't want to face these realities. He'd rather go and shovel fast food down his gullet like a damn garbage disposal and watch American Idol, for Christ's sake, instead of sit here and actually talk about the issues and actually talk about what's happening in America, actually talk about what direction we're headed, and we're headed into the new socialist quasi-communist government that these imbeciles out here don't want to talk about. They're too busy. They're too busy tickling their ass cracks, not wanting to talk about the actual issues. And that's what the Republicans used to be about, folks. They used to be about talking about the issues. And now they're not talking about Jack. I can't believe I'm living in this America right now. I can't believe that this is the land of the free, folks. I can't believe that nobody is thinking critically and thinking about America's interest as a sovereign nation. I can't believe this. I'm telling you, folks, I want to break something, man. I want to break stuff. It gets me angry. I want to punch holes through walls. I want to break furniture. I want to break glassware because the anger and the passion is going through me. I'm an American, damn it. I'm a damn American. And these Americans out here that got their heads shoved so far up their colon holes need to wake up and understand that we're not going to be America very long. We're not going to be America very long if we don't understand what's going on around us right now. And that's why I'm a little upset, folks. That's why I get all rowdy. That's why I start screaming, because I'm worried about this country, folks. I'm worried about America, the United States of America, the United States Constitution. I'm worried about us all, folks. And I'm just making this assumption on pure observation. 
I'm just saying, go out, write your congressmen, write your senators, and tell them what's wrong with America. And what's wrong with America is we have no economic opportunity out here in America anymore. All the means of production are outside of the United States of America because we have these lopsided trade deals that were made by these power-hungry autocrats that we sent to to Washington. Let me tell you, folks, I, I get angry. I get absolutely furious, and I, I know that you folks out there that listen to me, I hope you can tell that I really mean this crap. Okay, I'm not just some idiot out here, just like Heather alluded to earlier, that comes up on Blog Talk Radio, uh, pulls out a few talking points, and then talks about their own personal life. I don't want you to know about my personal life. I don't want you to care about me. I want you to care about the issues that I'm screaming my head off at right at you on this broadcast today. That's what I want you to talk about. I want you to think about those issues. I want you to do your own research. I can't believe that I'm living in a day and age where it's not cool to pick up a book and actually read and do your own damn research. Everybody goes to the damn boob tube and they're told what to do like a bunch of lab rats run into a food pellet and actually, instead of actually thinking critically, for Christ's sake. It's frustrating, man. It's frustrating that I'm living in this America. Wake up, people. That's all I'm asking. Wake up. Give me a call right now. If you happen to be listening in, if you happen to have an opinion about what I'm doing here, what I'm saying, if you think I'm off my rocker, I challenge you to get on the phone. Give me a damn call right now. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. I'm an American, folks, first and foremost. I'm an American. And I know most of these folks out here could give, I guess, a rat's ass about America nowadays, but not me. I love America. I love the Constitution. I, I love this place. But none of these candidates, and it doesn't matter where you're from, and like I stated, folks, I'm a lifelong Republican. But this Republican Party has submitted to liberal agenda. And the liberal agenda is more taxes more government regulation in our faces, and that's exactly what John McCain represents, and I'm not going to vote for him, folks. And if you're a true conservative, and if you're a true old-school Republican, then you shouldn't vote for him either. Because he's a liberal piece of trash, and anybody that has any goddamn common sense knows it, for Christ's sake. And I know all these ridiculous pieces of garbage out here that claim to be Republican are chastising me, but you can continue to do so. I'm a man of principle. I'm a man of passion. I mean what I say. I say what I mean. And I'm not going to sit here and submit to anybody just because of mere party loyalty. I'm not going to do it, Republicans. You can sit here and call me everything in the book. You can do whatever you can. You can twist anything you want. The bottom line is, is I'm a man of principle, and I am not voting against my principles. You pieces of trash. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. We need to We need to make sure that these politicians are talking about what we need to talk about, folks. That's why I'm sitting out of the presidential elections. I am not voting for any of these people. None of these people stand for any kind of true conservative Republican principles. Nothing. And it makes me sick. And all I'm saying, folks, is we need to go back to a grassroots level. All of you people, it doesn't matter what part of the country you are, I challenge you, if you know a a, a good conservative, a a good Republican that's running in your district, whether it's state representative, whether it's a congressional district, whether it's a Senate seat, whether it's a, a governor, please email me the information of the candidate in your area, because this is exactly what we need, folks. We need grassroots level Back to uh, uh, American ways. We need uh, uh, politicians that are going to assert the American Constitution, the American way, that aren't going to continue on with diluting our currency and making our currency work deadly. You've got American companies right now in America no longer accepting American money. They're accepting the euro dollar. And this is what I'm talking about, folks. We need to get back to what is affecting us as American people. And what's affecting us as American people? Well, that's economy, folks. That's where this country's headed. We need to understand what's going on with us as a people, as a a sovereign nation.
Anyway, folks, get back to me right now. If you want to chime in, give me a call. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We're kicking back on this President's Day. President's Day, huh? What does that mean anymore in this day and age when the dollar bills that these presidents are on are going to be worth jack crap? What does that mean? What does it mean that we have a public education system that completely produces nothing but a bunch of uh, uh, ill-minded students that lack creativity, that lack critical thinking, and we got a population of people that actually believe that we still need to throw more money at this public education problem. Folks, we need to scrap it. We need to scrap public education. Okay? We need to privatize it. If we privatize education, then these people have a financial incentive. Somebody who invests in a school has a financial incentive to make sure that these teachers are teaching your children. You have to understand, there is no incentive for these bureaucrats that are teaching your children in public education. There is no incentive for them to make sure that your children are getting any kind of education whatsoever. They could care less because they're going to have the job next year. They're going to have it the year after that, the year after that, and the year after that. Same with the principal, same with the superintendent, same with all those bureaucrats that make public education. That's why I think that if you haven't done so uh, so far, folks, I suggest you pull your child out of school and homeschool them. Believe me, you've got the greatest tool on the face of the planet called the computer. And if you want your child to get academically uh, uh, endowed when it comes to math and science, well, hire tutors, folks. There's a whole bunch of college kids right now working at a damn Starbucks or at a damn Barnes and Nobles that are majoring in biology and physics and, and mathematics that didn't do diddly with their uh, uh, with their degrees that would be more than happy to teach your children for a couple of a couple of dollars out of the pocket. And let me tell you, your children would learn a hell of a lot more than what they're being exposed to in this damn public education system. What does this public education system do besides expose your children to a social environment of a bunch of sexual deviants, drug addicts, gang members? I mean, it's just ridiculous, folks. And then we wonder why our children are turning out all screwed up. And then these teachers, they pull on your heartstrings. You know, they love to do that, don't they? Oh, the teachers have to pay for their own school supplies. Oh, the teachers have it so bad. It's malarkey, folks. Don't, don't listen to them. Don't listen to these people. The bottom line is, folks, is that these teachers have, you know, the average teacher makes 50 G's a year in America. That's pretty darn good, considering you can get an education degree on the University of Phoenix. It's ridiculous, folks. This is who's teaching your children. All right? This is who's teaching your children out here. And, you know, I I, uh, went to a a get-together where there were supposed to be a whole bunch of educators. It was by chance. I don't want to talk about how I was invited to this particular get-together, but I was invited to a party with supposed educators, and I thought, hey, great. I'll be able to talk some intellectual uh, conversation with some educators. Maybe I can learn something from these people, right? I go in there, and these people are dumb imbeciles. These people are ridiculous. These are the type of people who are so dumb, they would probably sit on the TV and watch the couch. They're so pathetically idiotic. All right? L- let me tell you something. What, most of these people had just barely gotten into education, okay, the, the people that I was talking with. And these were teachers. These were teachers that are teaching your children out here. And I asked them, uh, you, you just barely turned to a teacher? Well, what, what did you do before teaching? And one of them told me that they were a hairdresser. This was a woman. Uh, A damn hairdresser. So you got uh, an ex-hairdresser teaching your children. I asked another guy what he did. He was a damn garbage collector. Uh, A garbage collector teaching your children. Now, I have no qualms with what anybody does for a living. We all need to make a living, folks. But I thought that teachers, in my view, I thought teachers were going to have something academically that most of us don't because they're teaching our children, for Christ's sake. But no, most of these Nimrods got a little education degree off the University of Phoenix, 
They went and got some stupid uh, you know, teacher certification, and now they're teaching your children. A damn ex-trash uh, collector, an ex-barber shop runner, a damn ex-enema uh, bag cleaner. I mean, this is what's teaching your children, and this is why you have a presidential candidacy that's based on, no, on nothing, no, nothing that has to do with substance. It's all rhetoric. All this presidential candidacy is is a bunch of rhetoric. They are not acknowledging any of the problems that are suffering right now with America. All right? With America. You know, what, what is happening in America right now? There's a lack of jobs in America, folks. Why is there a lack of jobs? All right? There's a lack of jobs because we have imbalanced trade deals that have sent the means of production outside of the United States of America, like in communist red China, like in Mexico and other third world countries. Well, what are those people that got laid off those jobs to have them exported out? What are they going to do? Well, they got to go find new jobs. And they got to compete right now with 20 million illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor. And you're expecting these people in the midst of inflation, rising energy costs, the whole nine yards to still make it out here? It's ridiculous, and I don't hear any of these candidates talking about that. None of them. I don't hear them talking about anything of that nature. All I hear them talking about is a bunch of handouts, a bunch of more taxes, a bunch of more government bureaucracy, which is not what we need, folks. We need a leader who's going to lead us into the new millennium properly out here. Somebody who's going to take the greatest minds in America, take the biggest fat cats in America, and make some sort of a concoction that will spawn innovation, that will spawn industry, that will spawn jobs out here. That's what we need, folks. We need jobs. We don't need handouts. People don't want handouts. You know, if you create an entitlement society, that's borderline socialism. And empirically, folks, socialism doesn't work. It doesn't work. Every experiment of socialism has failed. You know it, and I know it. It doesn't work. And I don't want socialism, folks. I know that there's a bunch of people that are left-wing, long-haired, Karl Marx-worshipping communists out here that are jumping for joy that we're at the borderline phase of communist quasi-socialism out here, but I'm not too happy about it, folks. I still believe in our democracy, our constitutional republic. I still believe in the Constitution. I still believe in America. And I think that people need to get their heads out of their colon pipes take it out of their poop chutes, and understand that you need to start waking up and start looking out for the America's interest, too. You understand that? We, we need to start talking about America's uh, currency being devalued. We need to start talking a little bit more about that. We need to start talking about America's sovereignty. We need to start talking about getting these 20 million illegals that are in this country illegally the hell out. We need to start talking about better educating our children, taking these ridiculous bureaucrats that have done nothing but screw up the public education system, put them out of work, and make sure that they're accountable for what they teach out here. And the only way you can do that is to privatize education, folks. And let me tell you, if you privatize education, in my view, it would spawn a whole new industry for America, and I think a lot more people would have jobs. There would be a lot more opportunity for entrepreneurship. I think that there would be a better opportunity for everybody right here in America. And I think that we need to do it, and the sooner we do it, the better off we are. And if you're a damn public education teacher that's writing me all these damn hate mail, you don't know your ass from your elbow, you're a damn bureaucrat, all you want is free money for the rest of your life, all you know is that you can be the bureaucrat you are, you public education teacher. You can be a bureaucrat for the next 30 years of your life because your life is set. You're a, a person running in to the government for some money, and that's all there is to it. Anyway, sorry, folks. 419, you're on the air. Hey, Ghost. Uh, thanks for taking my call again. My, I can't type anything, so I would normally just type this in the chat room, but I can't type at all. Um, I was just thinking back because I was reading um, a book on Hitler. Yeah. And a lot of the things that they mentioned about Hitler, it reminds me so much of Barack Obama and how Hitler, he really had no real ideas. But he was able, because he was such a good speaker, he was able to sway people. And that reminds me so much of Obama right now, because he's not really saying anything. And it just it was sparked by your um, your statement about socialism and how it's possibly going to come with you know a Democratic president, even with McCain. I can't, I don't think we can really rule that out with McCain at all. 
But Absolutely I mean, not. Go go ahead. I just, oh, I, I'm, I'm just I'm almost done. I just want to mention this because I can't type it in the chat room. Um, it's just like it really reminded me a lot about how Hitler he he was an excellent speaker, but he really wasn't saying anything. But he was able to almost hypnotize people to actually listen to him, even though he had nothing to say. Yeah, and that's exactly what's going on with Barack Obama, in my opinion, because I really don't know the man's premise on a whole hell of a lot, and yet he's gonna he's mesmerized a whole populace of people. And I don't understand, and, and, and I have tried to uh, question a lot of the Barack Obama supporters that call in my show about why they like the man, why they're supporting the man, and it has nothing to do with any type of political substance whatsoever. All it has to do with is you know, ridiculous collateral matters Excuse me, that have nothing to do with politics. And, and I've told you about the woman that's voting for Barack Obama because he has nice teeth, right? Yes. That's, I mean, I, I, but I'm just like, are we really – I don't think it can possibly get that superficial any more superficial than that. It's just pretty he, bad. Yeah, just because he has a great orthodontist, <laughs> you're gonna vote for him. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's just I, I just really when you mentioned that socialism idea, I hope people understand that Obama's doing a lot. I know people call it like the politically correct term is marketing techniques with the way that he speaks and the way that he you know expresses himself. But I really think that it does harken back to um, to Hitler because he's really not saying anything. I've watched a whole speech of Obama, and he says, yes, we can, like 900 times. I'm like, yes, we can what? <laughs> oh, I agree. I mean, I, I've demanded that the man be a little bit more uh, elaborate in his political perspective, if you will. I mean, you know, give us a little bit more – uh, foresight as far as foreign policy is concerned about his economy. I don't know what he wants to do for this economy. All I've heard both of these candidates, Hillary Rodden and Barack Obama, is that they need to invest more in green jobs. And green jobs, I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, they actually believe that this is going to be the innovation of the future, uh, an agenda like global warming that's a farce, that's basically a prelude to socialism itself. I mean, like I stated on this program previous, the, the creator of Greenpeace, one of the most liberal environmental organizations on the planet out here, one of the founders said, and he blatantly admitted, that 80% of the movement are blatant socialists. The other 20% actually believe this is a religion. So I think that we need to look twice at this uh, supposed global warming garbage. I think I advise everybody who's listening in out there to do their research about the sun getting hotter. The sun is getting hotter out here, folks, and you can look that Mars ice caps are receding at a higher rate than the ice caps right here on Earth. And I think that there's some credence in the fact that, hey, maybe the sun's getting hotter. It has nothing to do with mankind. And if the, if the ice caps are receding, I think we need to get people the hell away from the coasts. I don't think that we need to start taxing generations for breathing. Unbelievable. I agree. It's the way that the things that we're getting away with are very dis I mean not well we but I mean like the federal government is really disheartening that they can continue to do this. It's like what are we really about? Are we really about things that don't exist now? Are we really about things that don't have any credence even in science? Global warming is losing credence in science, but now we all have to live this life of you know, of of conservation when there really is no need to. I, I, I don't yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm all for recycling. Okay, let's let's just let's be for recycling. Let's not guise it under some ridiculous global scheme. All right, let's recycle a little more. I'm for that, but let's not tax people for breathing. That's the whole motivation for this global warming agenda, and, and in my view, I think it even goes a little farther than that if you read into it. You had a, a, a global warming think tank, excuse me, a global warming think tank in London not too long ago suggest that we need to stop having children. Wow. <laughs> because of global warming, that, you know, children are actually the culprits of global warming. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. They, they, this is all a prelude into something really sick and sadistic, a lot of uh, pretty Maoist, if you will, real Mao Zedong type garbage. And I refuse to stay quiet while I hear all these liberals that have hijacked the Republican Party 
You've got John Turncoat McCain, a blatant liberal. He is for this ridiculous global warming garbage. He's actually, and you've made this suggestion, and, and it's been widely known as well, that he wants to tax an extra 50 cents on top of the uh, rising gas prices. He wants to put a 50 cent extra tax on gasoline. And I think that everything that he's proposed is more government, more taxes. It's going to retard the economy. That I mean, it's already pretty bad as it is. You you take all the regulation, you take all the taxes, you take everything John McCain's going to do, or the people on the left for that matter. It's it's just going to get even worse. And I feel real sorry for everybody out here who's too worried about Britney Spears, you know, shaving private parts. Or what, what, what Paris Hilton has strapped to her back, whether it's a monkey or a poodle. And let's start worrying, let's start worrying about what's going on around us right here and now in America and start thinking about our own sovereignty, our currency, and about our own situation right here instead of, instead of uh, you know, walking around half dead, in my view. Oh, I agree 100%. And thank you for um, letting me chime in one more time. And the thing that you mentioned again about the the boob tube, as you put it, um, yeah, it really has. You know, it's really competing with just everything. It's like we're all hypnotized by these like handful of people that really have no bearing on our everyday life. I know Heath Ledger. I'm sure that he. I, I guess because I don't really watch movies, Heath Ledger. I'm sure he was a great person. I mean, but I really people became like really invested in this man that really has no bearing on their lives, but with the economy almost near collapse in the next couple of, maybe even tomorrow, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow now that the borders is open in Iran. I mean, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but we're investing so much in Heath Ledger, the logic just it escapes me. It really does. I think that we do need to take our heads out of our dairy airs, and we need to understand that American people – need to stop anesthetizing themselves with car- with garbage, and they need to start paying a little bit more attention to the political realm because they need to understand that they are the American government. They need to take their heads out of their ass and understand that they can write their congressmen, they can write their senators, they can say, hey, wait a minute, why aren't you out there in Washington looking out for my best interests? Why aren't you out there negotiating better uh, trade deals in the international community for my best interest? You're out there playing bureaucrat, and if they're doing that, getting them the hell out of the office. That's what I'm talking about, and that's why I'm advocating anybody who's out there listening, if they know a true conservative Republican candidate that will stand by the people, that will do what it takes to be a representative for the people, not for some ridiculous corporate lobbyist, Let's go ahead and let's acknowledge those guys. I will give them airtime. I, I, I will pump their campaign, whatever it takes, because we need to get back to a grassroots level. The presidential campaign is lost. There's nothing but liberalism. They're going to put more regulation in our lives. All we can do is try to elect a Congress and a Senate that can try to stop them. That's all I can suggest. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And I was just wondering, what time is your show going to be on tomorrow? I don't know. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I'm going to have a show tomorrow. Excuse me. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have it a little bit more frequently. And if I do have it tomorrow, it should be about maybe uh, 6 p.m. Central Time, maybe 7 p.m. Central Time. Maybe okay. later. I don't I don't know. It just depends, you know. I, I mean, li- like I stated, you know, this is kind of a, a leisurely activity, but I do have a passion for it. That's why whenever I have the opportunity, I'll get up on here and – Whoever wants to listen, I appreciate that uh, that that they listen to my commentary. All I'm asking is that they talk about these subject matters and go out and perpetuate it. Oh, absolutely. I was thinking that maybe, I mean, it's your show if you do do one tomorrow or even the following day, maybe a little bit later, because I know that for some of us, like myself, I'm in Central Time as well, and it's kind of it's hard for us to call in because it does count against our minutes. <laughs> Um, to count, oh, well, I use my cell phone to call in, so yeah. it does count minutes. But you may want to take that in consideration. Maybe sure. It's, but yeah, I I always find it interesting, especially you know as the night wears on, you can see people what they say in the chat room. It really it's a you 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 tend to have extremes in there, like it's okay. really yeah like yeah I understand where you're coming from, but then it's like then they're making fun at you personally or anyone who supports you personally because. They really can't grasp the idea of what we're what we're facing. So, yeah, I I would hope that 
when you do have a show again that more people will, you know, say their opinions in the chat room because I really I like to read them. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and and at the same time, it also proves my point that none of these people want to talk about the actual issues that are affecting American folks. All they want to do is stimulate these ridiculous talking points that, you know, really mean absolutely nothing to us as people. They just care. I mean, it, it really means nothing. Let's talk about things that are going to affect us in our lives. Let's talk about creating jobs. Let's talk about getting these illegal immigrants out of the country. Let's talk about stimulating the economy, innovation. Let's talk about, let's talk about really educating our children and not sending them to this ridiculous public education system that's retarding their creativity and their critical thinking. That's all I'm saying. Let's start talking about these things. Absolutely. And thanks again, Ghost. I'm going to listen to the rest of the show is over. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling, Heather. Well, folks, I mean, the bottom line is, is all, all I want, all right, all I want is, I, 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 I just want people to understand that we need to talk about this, okay? We need to call and we need, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about these issues. And the bottom line is, is all I want to do is stimulate debate. I'm not saying anybody should do anything other than talk about these issues. Let's talk about creating jobs out here. Let's talk about why the jobs are leaving. Let's talk about educating our children to spawn innovation. Let's talk about creating more American opportunities for American people, in my opinion. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, that's all I'm asking, folks, is just let, let's continue on with the, with the same thing that we've always been on as, a, as, a, as an American sovereign nation, and that's to continue to perpetuate the Constitution. That's to continue to perpetuate everything that everybody comes to know and love about America. And what is America? America is the land of opportunity. Remember, you could be born in this country, or at least it used to be. You could be born in this country a nobody and die somebody, folks. The economic opportunity is here for everyone. That's all there is to it. You know? That's all there is to it, folks. And I appreciate everybody who's listening in to us right now. This is uh, True Conservative Radio. We're going to have it a little bit more frequent right now. I suggest to all of you, if you could, add me to your favorites list. Uh... You can get back to me and listen to us in the archives as well at uh, www.blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, uh, you know, check us out. Uh, you know, you can check out the archives. Uh, you can, you know, add me to your favorites, the whole nine yards, so uh, we can continue to talk about these subject matters. You know, and I encourage all of you folks as well that, you know, if you find some credence in something I say, if you think that some of the things I say have some credence in your life or in your family's lives, your friends' lives, I encourage you to use the share option that's right there uh, on the blogtalkradio.com slash ghost area. Share these broadcasts with other people uh, through the Internet and say, hey, listen, this is what I heard today, and then have them listen to it and then talk about it. Because we need to talk about these things. That's the only way we're going to change minds, folks, because the boob tube ain't going to do it. All right? If, you, if you're waiting for the Communist News Network or, or, or that MSN, whatever the hell it's called, if you're waiting for them to talk about these issues that affect us as Americans, you got another thing coming. You've got another thing coming. And all I suggest to you folks is, is let's come together and let's talk about it. That's all I'm saying. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it with your family. Talk about why there's no American jobs. Why is it so hard for the American person to get by in this country? Why? Take in consideration, why do we have these lopsided trade deals with other countries and we're giving away American jobs to communist China? Communist China is a country that abuses its people, that forces abortions, that forces families to only have one child and aborts other ones that they have, that kill every, every girl child that's born in that population. They've made it purpose in China. There are four Chinese men to every one Chinese woman in China. Why is that, folks? Because they're building their military. That's what they're doing. They're building their military. All the money that America sends over there in manufacturing trade, what are they doing with that money? They're buying nuclear warheads, folks, and they're aiming them right here 
And you can look that up if you don't believe me. They're taking our money that we are giving to them, and they're buying nuclear warheads so they can point them right at us. And I damn you, China, you communist piece of trash. We need to write our Congress people and say, you know what? We, as the American people, don't want diplomatic relations with a communist nation. We don't want it. Especially a communist nation that's going to take away our money, all right, our jobs, and they're going to buy nuclear warheads to point them at us, folks? Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous, folks. We need to tell China that they need to choke on their own damn chopsticks, and they need to understand that we're not going to accept their imbalance of trade anymore. We're not going to accept the fact that they're allowing, or anybody, the international community is allowing China to utilize the political ideology of communism to extort, because that's what they're doing from their population, folks. They are extorting labor out of their population at 10 to 15 cents an hour. And how is America going to compete with that on the world market? You take that and you combine that with the fact that we've got 20 million illegal immigrants right here in America. Right here in America that are devaluing the cost of labor for everybody out here, folks. You take all that into consideration and the fact that we're paying more for energy, we're getting inflation from everything up the wazoo, It's becoming harder for the average person to live out here, and you have to look at the root of foundations of it all, folks. And the root foundation is all these problems, folks. All these problems. And all I'm asking you to do, folks, is talk about it. Talk about it. You know, like like I say, I beg you, folks, you know, I beg you just, you know, Share these broadcasts with people that you know, your internet friends, your family. Send them out and say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about some of the things that he's saying about, about our American economy, about American sovereignty, about the American Constitution, about the public education system completely ruining our country, about the fact that the devaluing of the dollar is getting so bad in America that there are New York shops, high-end retail shops right now that won't accept American money. This is what I'm talking about, folks. This is what I'm talking about, and we all need to talk about it. And I urge all of you to talk about it with with your family, folks. Talk about it with your friends. This is the only way we're going to uh, change minds. And at the same time, I encourage all of you to write your congressmen, write your senators, write your state representatives. You know, I mean, just write them and understand that, hey, you you work for us. Remember, we're the people. This is a country made for the people, you jack nuts. And you need to understand that you need to have our best interest at hand every time that you're out there voting. And you need to actually read the bills that you sign, you moron. That's what we need to start doing. You need to actually read the bills that you sign and take your damn Kentucky Fried Chicken Grease thumb out of your colon hole. And you need to understand that you work for the American people. American people. You don't work for these corporate lobbyists. You work for the American people, and you need to understand that. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you vote for in this presidential nomination. You can kiss it goodbye because this, no matter what president you elect in this presidential nomination, they want quasi-socialist communist government, folks. I mean, you got John McCain, one of the most ridiculous excuses for a Republican out here today that's out here touting he wants more taxes. He wants to raise 50 cents uh, tax per gallon on gasoline. He, you know, he's for all this global warming carbon tax bull, bull crap. He wants to tax you for breathing. Uh, he, he wants to put more government regulation in our lives. He's wiped his ass with the First Amendment with McCain fine gold. I mean, I can go on and on about this man. He is a poor excuse for a Republican, and that's why I'm not voting for any of these people. And if you're a true conservative, if you're a true Republican, if you believe in American principles, if you believe that we need to save the American dollar and make sure it doesn't fall down the tubes, if you uh, actually believe in American work ethic, in American jobs, in the American way, then don't vote for any of these liberal pieces of trash that are running for president right now. 
You need to stick to a grassroots level, folks. And I encourage all of you, take your heads out of your asses. It doesn't take much to go out and find out who your local representatives are, who your state representatives are, who's running for your congressional district, who's running for your Senate seats out there. Take your heads out of your asses and go out and find out who these people are and call them. Call their headquarters. Make sure you know their stances on issues. Make sure that they're proven people that have America's interests at hand. That have America. Remember, America's interests at hand. Not some corporate imbecilic lobbyist. Not some idiot flooding his campaign contribution fund. America. Remember the United States of America? Make sure he has America's interest at hand. No matter who the candidate is. And if you have a good candidate, by all means, give me the email of the information. Email me all the information of the candidate that you think that you know of that's out there having America's interest at hand. That's all there is to it. That is all there is to it, folks. And all I want people to do is take these broadcasts, okay, folks? Listen to them and perpetuate them, if you will. Talk about these subject matters to other folks, all right? Talk about these subject matters to other folks because it's important, man. It's important. It affects your lives. It affects my life. It affects our children's lives. So we need to take our heads out of our asses and understand that America is falling down the tubes. The, the American currency is going down the tubes. Wake up, folks. Wake up. I want to break something, folks. I want to throw something. I've got passion, folks. You can hear it in my voice. I'm not just talking out of my ass out here. i got passion, folks. i got passion because I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. And the bottom line is, the bottom line is, is that America's going down the tubes, folks. And I believe in America. <sighs> I'm telling you, you can hear the passion in my voice because I believe in America. I want to save America. I want to save the American family. I don't want to sit by and, and, and take my last breaths in this country that I fought for, my ancestors fought for, that we spill blood for, for Christ's sake. I don't want to take my last breath knowing I didn't do anything before this damn country destroyed itself. <sighs> And I'm telling you, boy, I am not going to stop until people start acknowledging that we need to talk about America's interest. The American way, folks. Remember that? Do you remember America? Do you remember America? Because it's about to go away, folks. Just look at our devalue in dollar. Take a look at the 20 million illegal immigrants that are about to get amnesty. Take a look at all the trade deals that we're having that are shipping jobs out of America. Just take a look at the fact that we don't produce anything anymore. That's all there is to it. And that's why I'm screaming, folks. Everybody's, you know, up in arms like, why is he screaming? You know, why, why, why is he getting so upset? I'm getting upset because I love this country. I love this country. I love the Constitution. I love the American flag. I love everything about this country, but this country is changing. It's no longer the American way, folks. And you people need to take your head out of your clogged up colon pipes, and you need to understand that our currency is being devalued to the point where it's not going to be worth anything. We have no jobs in America. We don't produce anything as an American economy anymore. We don't do anything. We don't do anything. And I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me for another edition. This is a President's Day edition of True Conservative Radio. I challenge all of you, please... Uh, look into the archives. Listen to us whenever you're bored at night, whenever you have anything to do. Go to www.blogtalkradio.com ghost 
go ahead and go by and, and take a look at some of the archives. We have great times together, and we always talk with the truth. We always talk about passion. We always talk about this country, America, because that's what this country's about, folks. We need to worry about America's interests first. We need to worry about our interests as the American people first. We need to make sure that these candidates that are running for president or any office in America has our interest, the people's interest, American public's interest first before anyone else's. And all these people out here, especially these Republicans, because I'm a lifelong Republican, and they're all upset at the fact that I won't vote for John McCain. I'm not voting for any of these people. They're all pissed off and calling me all kinds of names. Well, I tell you what, you people can chew each other up the colon pipe all you want to. I'm a man of principle, I'm a man of conviction, and I'm not going to vote against my principles. That's why I'm staying home this presidential election, and I'm worrying about my state representatives, I'm worrying about the Congress, and I'm worrying about the Senate, you freaking milky lickers. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me for another edition of True Conservative Radio. Add me to your favorites. I'm out of here, folks. God bless you all. God bless America. God bless this country. And death to feminism. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.